Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And I'm sure that you can see just from what you're looking at what this video is going to be about. So, I have this old BSR turntable record changer deck. Found a nice case for it. It's a little off center at the moment. I haven't actually put that in there properly yet. I'm just doing this to show you. And also, for those of you who think that I don't ever change my bed sheets and I've been using the same filthy black bed sheet for the whole time, well, yeah. So, yeah, I do have other bed sheets. And that black sheet was not black from dirt, so that's just a black sheet. Anyway. So what I want to do is make, not exactly a preamp, but an impedance matching circuit so I can connect the ceramic cartridge up to a normal amplifier without it sounding all tinny and baseless. And I think I'm going to use, this bench could really do with a bit of a clear up, I think I'm going to use you. So this is a very special tube. Now, it may look like an ordinary dual triode, and in fact it is. But this tube can run at, and is designed to run, at 12 volts HT. So that means I'm not going to have to worry about a high voltage power supply. And I can power the filaments on the same voltage as the um, rest of the circuit, so... I think it's a pretty good choice. And the other thing with valves is that we're going to have an almost infinite input impedance. So that's another good thing. So, this is what I come up with. Okay, so I've only drawn one triode here, but just bear with me. And before anybody says anything, yes, I know I should put a resistor between the grid and the ground, but I'm not going to. Because I want as much input impedance as possible. So, our 12 volts goes straight into the anode. And then out of the cathode, and this 22 kilo ohm resistor is the load resistor. And then through the capacitor and to our amplifier. So it's not actually going to amplify voltage. In fact, we might even get a little bit less voltage out of th than we get in, but shouldn't be too bad. But what I want to do first is power the circuit up with nothing connected to the grid and see what voltage we get between the grid and the ground. I mean the cathode and the ground. Hopefully this resistor won't pull the voltage down too much. Got a little 12A7 tube in a socket now. And I've taken the liberty of wiring pins 1, pin 6 and pins 5 together. So that's both of the anodes and one side of the filament. So let's wire the rest of this up and see what happens. Alright, so I've got the circuit wired up. Got the valve and my faulty meter connected to this resistor. I call it my faulty meter because it doesn't work properly anymore, but at least it still measures voltages. And I forgot to plug in the little thing that tells me the things. I'm not going to get the things. Alright, let's test this thing. So I'll turn this on and let's see what voltage we get across the resistor. Voltage up to 12, voltage to start climbing while the valve's warming up. There it goes. Well, that seems a little lower than I expected. I'm just going to give that a few minutes to come up to its full temperature. And I'll be back. Well, it seems to have stopped at about 2.56 volts, so... So it seems a rather, still a rather high impedance output. I'm going to try a 47k instead and we'll see what we get with that. Okay, so this is with a 47k resistor between the cathode and the ground. Let's see what this gives us. I don't know why we're getting negative voltage. I must have connected the meter up the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. Is it going to climb any higher than what we had before? I'm a little disappointed actually. I don't think it's going to get any higher than that. Let's just 
raise the input voltage up to the full 12.6 let's get that as high as we can get it um, 2.85 I mean yeah 2.8 volts okay I know what I'll do I'll eliminate the resistor completely and see what voltage we get Three point eight volts. Okay. Well, that seems more reasonable. So I think we're gonna have to make a few modifications to the circuit. So I'm just gonna do that and I'll be back. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. Now in the final version of this I'm gonna be using both sides of the twelve eighty seven and there's gonna be two of everything here as well, but for now we're just using one side to see. Yeah, how well it works. So the output from our tube goes into this transistor here which strengthens the signal. It doesn't amplify it but it strengthens it and then sends it to our amplifier through this capacitor here. And another beauty of this circuit is we're not going to have to worry about biasing that transistor because the voltage coming out of the valve is going to do that for us. And obviously we need to have a load resistance as well or the circuit just won't work. It will just charge up the capacitor and we won't get anything so that's why that 10k resistor's there so should have a nice low output impedance so I'm gonna wire this load up and see what it does ah here it is we're about to start testing now I'm sure you're dying to hear what this is gonna sound like and I'm dying to hear what it's gonna sound like as well so we've got a valve with one side hooked up to the rest of the circuit as a transistor, I couldn't find any BC547s on hand, so I've just used a C1815. It's about the same. Only difference is that the pins are laid out a little different, but it, you know, it doesn't matter. So this wire is going to connect to our ceramic cartridge. And this is going to go out to our amplifier. First thing I want to do is I just want to run a, um, just want to run a few tests. I'll make sure this is gonna sh not going to short out on anything. Alright. That all looks good. Let's bring my faulty meter into the picture. Right, here's hoping nothing goes up in smoke. And I forgot to turn my little gauge on so I can know what voltages are going into the circuit. Go me! I am messing up in all places today. Earlier I didn't have the camera's f-stop on properly, so the picture was all dark. <laughs> Alright, now let's see what voltage we're getting out of the circuit. I'm trying to find somewhere where I'm not going to burn myself on the valve. I'll just try to clip that on there. Alright, we're getting... 3.1 volts out of the circuit, that's not too shabby. That's on the emitter of the transistor. Well, we know what voltage is coming out of the transistor, that was about 3.1 volts, so yeah, that's going to be about 3.6 volts. No, about 3.7 volts coming out the tube. Alrighty then, I've got this thing on and I'm listening to a record through headphones and it sounds pretty good. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't think this would work, or at least not work very well, and I surprised myself. I wish I could show you how good this sounds, but I'm sure I would get a copyright strike for showing this, so I'll just look in some of the 45s here and see if there's anything that won't get me. Even this LP from the early 50s, which time has not been kind to. This is the side that got almost completely destroyed. And even this sounds good. Hey love, if you're careless with your kisses, find another turtle dove. I 
can't live on ricochet romance. No, no, not me. If you're gonna ricochet, baby, I'm gonna set you free. I decided to hear how a 78 would sound like this. Now, bear in mind I don't have the right needle for this. So I'm just playing with an ordinary LP needle. But it sounds amazing. Have a listen for yourself. In the fountain, through the ripples, how they shine. Just one wish will be granted. One heart will wear a valentine. So I've built up the circuit just to see how well it works. And one side is not working. So, I'm monitoring both the valve and transistor's outputs on the bad side. Now, it looks like it's working. The yellow line is the voltage coming out of the valve's um, cathode, and the blue line is coming out of the transistor. So, I connect my scope up, trying to program the circuit, trying to figure out what's wrong, and with the scope connected, it appears to be working. But I'm now going to connect, disconnect the cathode from the oscilloscope. And now look at it. And now it's not working. I connect this back up, hopefully without shorting anything out. Connecting the cathode back up to the oscilloscope. If I can get that on there. And the signal comes back. What I think is going on here is when I connect the scope to the valve's cathode, it's like I've connected a resistor between the cathode and the ground. The strange thing is, on the good side, there is no resistor between the cathode and the ground. But this side doesn't seem to work. Unless I put a resistor there. Okay, so now we're listening to the bad side. As you can probably tell. So, I've got this crocodile clip connected to these two resistors. One is a 2.2 mega ohms, the other is a 470 kilo. -ohm. And this lead is going to the cathode. So let's connect up our 2.2 mega ohm. Now sounding good. There is a little bit of hum, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's connect up the 470k. Without any resistor between the cathode and the ground. Yeah. So I don't know why this side needs a resistor between the cathode and the ground and this side does not. It's almost like there's a capacitor between the cathode of the valve and the base of the transistor. So I think for uh, the, the bad version, um, the bad side of the circuit, I'll we'll just put a resistor here. Might as well do it. Same on both sides. So 470k seems to work pretty well, so that's what I'll use. But that's something I'm going to take into consideration when I build this thing for real. So we've got our circuit. Next step is going to be giving the record player a complete mechanical overhaul, and that's going to be in the next part of this video whenever I do it. But enough about that, because right now, I've got something else to do.